Now on radio, what banana skins and a waft of smoke can do for your Robson. Eric chairs this week's Question Gardener's Time. This week you find us in a palace, a building on a spectacular scale, bigger than West Sussex, the largest Roman residence north of Rome. The fish palace was discovered more than 50 years ago. It was subsequently excavated by the eminent archaeologist Barry Palatine. First, though, our legionary forces and Christine and Bob are already on parade in the Palace Museum as your question gardener time panel. Also coming up later, we ask if slugs could talk, what would they tell us? First, though, who's got our first question, please? (coughs) Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, Hello, Clifford Pinner, uh, proprietor of Beckwith's one and only health food shop and eco emporium. uh, My wife, my, my lovely wife, Jane, is a chocoholic. Now, I know the panel love a bar or two of dairy milk themselves, so do they think I should indulge Jane's love of cocoa derived comestibles? If so, with what? Right. A passion for chocolate. How's it to be fulfilled? Christy? I would embellish that rich aroma of chocolate with a plum pudding that would really set off that beautiful, dark, rich colour of the cosmos. So you're suggesting plum pudding and a brand called Cosmos. I've not heard of that one. Um, If it's got fruit and nut in it, um, she doesn't like... She's got an allergy to uh, to that so she wouldn't like the fruit and nut well there's a chocolate peppermint and that would be good oh that's safer she she likes she likes peppermints when you rub it it also smells a bit like the after eight chocolate so that would be a good one so you're suggesting that she rubs something like an after eight but it's not actually an after eight it's an after eight substitute yes bob um zaluciensia capensis uh, goodness, I'm not sure I could write, write that one down. It, it sounds a bit posh to me. But saying that, is, is it from Thornton's? It has this most wonderful vanillary chocolatey aroma. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yes, I, I can. Uh, it does sound gorgeous, um, but also probably very expensive. And the reason is, is because when you handle it, you release the smell and they find it. And believe me, she, she, she would indeed find it. It's like at the uh, recent church Easter egg hunt, she was like a truffle hunting terrier. And she managed to grab almost all of the Easter eggs, much to the annoyance of all, all present, children and other, other, in adults. There we are, some suggestions, but to keep the weight down, you're going to have to have her out there behind the lawnmower. No, oh, we've, got, we've got one of those uh, sit-on mowers. It, it's electric and green, of course. Um, but maybe I could uh, get her to take up marathon running or, or pole, pole dancing. Anyway, um, thank you, panel, for, for all your chocoholic suggestions. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, another question, please. Cyril Nutsford, the vicar of Beckworths and Faiths. I have three large acres on which I have a beautiful orchard. My apples and pears have come on a treat since I have sung opera to the trees, but alas, my quince have turned out rotten and inedible. I would not even serve them to the devil himself, nor raffle them at harvest festival. My question is, what can I do? Is there any cure for the rot? Should I perchance hold back on my opera singing and return to my roller disco ways? I have brought in a bag of quince just to show you how rotten they are. Let's have a look at the sample. Okay, well, I've got a nice, generous bag full of here. It's nice to have several to look at. I can pass some on to the... Oh, dear. Scabby-looking mess. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) That's about the sum of it. Yeah. There's two things you could try. One would be banana skins. I doubt it would do any good. Oh, yes, yes, I, I like bananas. But just the skins, you say? And the other would be smoke. What, like a pipe? My curate Marvin left his pipe behind. I could use that perchance. Um, I'd suggest you take up me puffing for grass <laughs> and blow smoke over it a, a few times. Is that grass as in old Nick's marijuana? I'm not sure I could do that even to save an orchard of quince. I mean, 
What would the bishop say? So, smoke and banana skins. Well, I mean, there's not much you can do about it, I'm afraid. Apart from feeding it with potash um, and doing an awful lot of praying... Yes, it's, a, it's been a terrible problem, and just to prove it, I have a piece of one of my own quince. I think it, in fact, I think my quince is scabbier than your quince, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yours do indeed look terrible. I don't feel so bad about my own fruits now. Put me in your prayers, less scab next time. Yes, I will indeed pray for you, my son, and for your sinning ways. Thank you to you and to the panel. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, lady next. Regina Dewsbury, Beckworth. In my younger days, I was an air hostess on the coaches, and now I'm an accomplished lady lorry driver. My bed has seen better days and given comfort to many celebrities, minor royals and boy bands from the Beatles through to Take That and Westlife. I am after independent advice on what sort of new mattress I should buy. That's to all the panel. Okay, doke. So, some suggestions, please. Bob first. I guess you've got odor or... No, it's an old Dunla pillow from, from the 1950s. That's a good choice. It's the most toughest, most reliable one, and it's gorgeous. However, there is another one. Oh, what's that? Um, it's a hybrid. It, it's the Birkwood Eye Gold Edge series, and it, there are several similar ones. This one is fantastic. It's got a green, rounded ends with a little edge to it. My goodness, like a firework display. Spectacular while it's there. I'm not sure I need fireworks in my bed. I, I normally provide all the entertainment, but uh, I'll take a look the next time I'm in bed, Zaras. Thank you. And one from you. What about um, Lanceolata? Not very aromatic, but a very no. attractive small so it's got that going for it. I'd rather go for something I can pronounce, and I'd like a big bed, not small, so I can stretch out with my guests. Smell it, it's got that sort of spicy scent. And it also has sort of nice maroony undersides. And it's interesting more than very, very beautiful. But it's nice, nevertheless. So you could try that. It's quite striking. Mm, I could try it, but if I'm honest, it sounds like something you'd find in a tart's boudoir. And I'm looking for sophistication and springs. But uh, thank you all the same for your suggestions. There we are. In case you weren't quick enough off the mark at getting your pen and your notepad, uh, the names of are on the question gardener's time pages of the radio website together with a slug collection now what about other favorite illness bob's owned up to his grapes of course he would uh, what about you um, well i guess for me it's got to be brown thicket they come up everywhere and in fact they're brilliant if they're in the way yank them out put them on the compost heap and uh, and look for the insects well my choice hasn't quite got that sort of feel to it uh, it's gout. So <laughs> regular listeners to the programme will know that I'm, the, you know, I'm the, the national chairman of the Gout Appreciation Society. <laughs> and sole member. <laughs> and sole member. <laughs> and uh, it, it's very effective. Anyhow, you can see photographs on the Question Gardener's Time pages of the radio website. Who's got our next question, please? Stephen Bendish. I am a romantic novelist writing under the name Stephen Nightingale. My question for the panel regards my mother, my harshest critic. Of late, she has not been herself. She has come out in hives and finds it hard to walk distances of ten miles or more. Yet she still does not like my novels, nor appreciate the genre of Barbara Cartland. What am I to do? Should I have her humanely put down? What do the panel suggest? Have you got a photograph of her? Yes, I have a photograph here. It's only black and white, I'm sorry to say, but it's a very good likeness. Uh, let's have a look. Thank you very much. Here we are. Oh, dear. <laughs> He's looking a bit manky, the old lady, isn't she? As I said, she has been suffering from hives. I wonder if it's her age or lack of iron. What do you make of that? Christine? Well, this various things the matter with this. Um, there's certainly a little scab. Yes, the hives are virulent and very pustulous to the touch. She looks just like a weeping Mr. Blobby. Um, and the beginnings of powdery mildew. Hmm, I've not heard of that. It sounds like an illness I could use in a Victorian romantic novel. The lady was on her deathbed, 
suffering from powdery mildew. I like that. So quite a collection of mank on your <laughs> specimen. Thank you. Mother will be thrilled with your diagnosis. Will it spread all over? You know, a lot of the fungal diseases um, have really developed p proliferately. So should I take that as a yes then? I did wonder if I should help nature take its natural course and administer, shall we say, an ingestion of barbiturates? I mean, the old bird is well insured and the inheritance could smooth my passage onto the Booker Prize. No, I mean, you could always fleece it. I wouldn't have put it that crudely, but I'll take that as the affirmative. Um, there's not an awful lot you can do about it. My thoughts precisely, dear sir. I, m I mean, madam. What would you do? And would I you be as happy to do that? I would definitely be happy because I think if you allow it to continue as a... presuming it's one of the big ones. She is, as they say in Mills and Boone, well upholstered. She's also very unsteady on stockinged feet, often falling off stepladders and leaning out of open windows, scaring the neighbours. If it's going to lean out, it's going to be a bit dangerous, isn't it? Yes, I have had complaints, but nothing I can't deal with. No need to involve the police, I say. Have you spotted anything else through the eyeglass, Bob? Um, no. Really? I was on the verge of ringing the crematorium. Or do you suggest a DIY jobby in the Rose Garden? So, have a bonfire. Yes, that sounds like the first rule of burial by fire. Build a bonfire. And then what? Wait until she's popped off, shall we say? And bung her on like a Guy Fawkes effigy? spread the ashes and spread them thinly thinly you say to hide the evidence well thank you panel you have been most encouraging with my dealing of mother's complaint thank you and the very best of luck good um, <laughs> anyway uh, who has our final question here at Fish Palace Ronnie Ilminster Beckworth I'm a psychic detective and nature lover being a nature lover, I love to find similarly-minded gentlemen in beautiful surroundings such as parks and the grounds of stately homes to engage in deep conversation and frottage by the fuchsias. Can the panel advise on any lovely locations to visit and the ideal, discreet yet alluring all-weather attire for such outings? And is this the best way to make new friends? Do you agree, Bob? Yes, uh, I had several Camp Golden Queen. Some of them are pretty invasive. Oh, Golden Queens, you say? Hmm, sounds quite unusual. And where, where do you find them? I've got many around my garden, which I think are marvellous. Oh, in your garden. That really is marvellous. And they were fruiting, no question of it. They do sound like my sort of fruits, I must say. And, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be adverse to joining in. The trouble is, it's cold, it's windy, and something I've found that makes it so much nicer. Pop down your local charity shop and say you want a ski suit. Sorry, did you say ski suit? Where do you live? Siberia? It's like a set of overalls, but they're made of high-tech material. They are wonderful. They're warm. They breathe so you don't get sweaty inside. I know what a ski suit is, ducks. You don't have to sell me one. And by the way, I don't sweat, I glow profusely. But the thing is, will it attract the fellas, or should I customise it in some way, you know, make it into a Ronnie special? The best thing is, soak it in urine. You what? Pee on it? Oh, this isn't the Dark Ages, that sounds horrible. I want to attract hunks, not tramps. Um, it's, it's actually very strong stuff. I know, that's why I'd rather not, you know, the smell of it. Ooh. I mean, couldn't I just wash it in a, in a nice detergent in, and the smell of roses or something? I certainly wouldn't want to sterilise it. I'm sure that it's far more use with all that, the active bacteria and fungi on it. That's what, that's what you want. Yeah, don't be too neat and tidy. Yes, but there's a big difference between looking a little dishevelled, like a, a rough and tough boy, and smelling like a well-used urinal. And, of course, if you do fall over, they'll soon be able to find you because they're luminous day-glow <laughs> colours. <laughs> You may laugh, but I did ask for suggestions of a discreet look. You want me to dress like a fluorescent toilet. <laughs> and you'll all have gathered that Bob looks an absolute picture. I will remember one day when we turned up in the middle of winter and everyone laughed at me in my white P 
pink and yellow ski suit. <laughs> By the end of the day, I was still smiling and they were all looking a little cold and blue. Have you heard that, Christine? I have. I think it's a lot of bunkum. I'm with you there, lady. Um, have you ever had any success uh, looking for lady love amongst the bushes? I used to work at Bridge House, the, the home of Yorkshire Banky Pank, and I pulled whenever I want it. Well, good for you, girlfriend. Was it after dark? Anyway, thank you for all your answers. Anyway, just carry on being dirty. <laughs> I will, I will, thank you. Talking of which, did, did anybody see that uh, article in the papers about a chap who's been threatened with a fine of £80 because he pruned a, a shrub in his front garden into a phallic willy shape? <laughs> I've seen a fair few phallic shapes when I've gone around. <laughs> Thank you very much for your questions. Thank you for your answers. That's it for this visit. Goodbye and good garden. Question Gardener's Time was produced by Howard. The assistant producer was Rags.